Welcome to the garage. The garage is a bit messy. My workbenches are completely full of stuff. I got all those bags of packing peanuts, some yard waste, bins from the workshops, and then way back there in the left corner up in the front is the cold frame. The cold frame has served me well for about three years, but it's time to upgrade. So in order to make my garage a little bit more functional, I've added some shelves and it's a work in progress because every time you think you have enough place to store everything, you have more stuff. George Carlin said it best. We um, have more stuff. So we're gonna move the stuff around over there and then we're gonna create a bigger place to put our stuff so I can put the other stuff in the other nooks and crannies. The main goal, of course, is to have a cold frame that's easier accessible for me. So when you're making a cold frame, this was pretty good. I could open up the doors and I could get into my bonsai and it's pretty great. But I'm gonna go a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper, a little bit wider, and I wanna be able to just stand up and look at most of my trees. There'll be, of course, a lower shelf. So my power box, ends right here and of course you've got the track for the garage door over there where this pretty much ends right now so we're talking about a six foot yeah about a six foot cold frame in the end but we're gonna make it as high as the track here so I can have it about six to seven feet tall somewhere in that range and it's gonna probably jut out a little bit wider than this is right here just a little bit don't know when the next car will be in this third stall of our garage. Um, my oldest stepson is 11, so we've got a few years. Maybe this new cold frame will be outdated by the time he's driving a car. We'll make it fit if we need to. So I don't want to go too far out. So this is just the very first attempt for me to start cleaning up the garage so we can get a cold frame uh, built in here. Before the cold frame goes up, I'm gonna go ahead and sheetrock this whole side of the wall for an extra layer of uh, you know, insulation in the garage, if you will. I'm gonna to try to do that to as many walls over here on this side as possible. That side sheetrock because it's attached to the house. This side is not because it's exposed to the outside. But we're gonna go ahead and sheetrock it to keep this uh, garage just even slightly more insulated. So the ups and downs of the temperature within the cold frame will uh, be a lot less um, because, you know, if the garage is pretty stable, the cold frame will be even more stable, even though it's closed up and insulated and heat source and all that. It's time to stop talking and it's time to dig in to this mess. Maybe I should have ordered a dumpster. Incidentally, when I'm filming this first part of this uh, episode, this is only the second batch of heavy rain in the month of June. And it's the 26th of June while I'm videotaping this. We had a Father's Day beautiful rain. I showed that in a couple episodes. It might do this for the next two hours. Just a few minutes in and the area is looking brighter and cleaner, less stuff in the way. So I have all these nice hangy things for the uh, rakes and the shovels. Here's the cold frame. Look, there's more stuff in the cold frame already for me to move.
fantastic. I obviously have too much stuff. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna move the cold frame over to this side of the third stall to get it out of the way. And then we've got some more miscellaneous lumber and hey, a good old hockey stick. Yeah, it's been years. Now we're gonna take off all of the board here Take off all this equipment. And we're gonna expose all the walls. Take off any uh, shelving units that are up top. We're just gonna clean this corner out really well. We're gonna sheet rock this corner first and work our way that way. Once it's sheet rocked, I can build the structure and have the cold frame kind of in place. Um, and then I can continue with the rest of the garage because that'll be in place. So, more stuff to get rid of. Most of the stuff has been put away. We've moved enough. I just gotta take this down, a couple of brackets that hold some stuff, and then Sailor Man, affectionately known as my Uncle Jim. My dad carved this uh, with a chainsaw, and uh, I was into sailing about 20 years ago. I still have the sailboat, little 13-foot uh, sunfish sailboat. It's up at the cabin right now. I haven't used it for about five to 10 years. Um, hoping to get that out soon. But my dad carved this many, many years ago for me because uh, of the interest in sailing. And um, we'll have to find a, a place for Sailor Jim. Uh, we say uh, Uncle Jim because he kind of resembles my Uncle Jim, my dad's brother. So time to move this guy, move that, and we're almost ready to start making some measurements for the sheetrock. Now it's time for sheetrock. So we're gonna put some sheetrock over here from the panel over to the wall over there. So we're gonna take a little uh, rough estimate here. Oh, this is where it's a two person job. Come on, stay in there. 102 inches. eight feet six inches so when you get four by eight an eight footer would lay perfectly that way but they'd be stacked this way otherwise we'll go four and four which is the traditional way to do it um, and we're going to only go six to well we're going to go up to the ceiling so it's going to be eight feet so we should be able to get uh, two panels on here perfectly uh, so two panels and that's done and then we have a scrap piece which is going to need about uh oh, 18 inches how about 18 inches, 17 inches, all the way up. So, it's kind of a rainy day today. Let's load up the van, clear out everything from that, and uh, go get some sheetrock. I got all the materials here as it was downpouring, so in the parking lot of the big box store, I was okay. Had to sit in the car for a while before I unloaded. We got the first board up, we went vertical, got it right up against the box over here, and we have the uh, insulation in there moisture barrier and uh, one more is going to go right here and then we're going to have some pieces parts over here my body's telling me i probably should take a break so we're going to do that we're going to get some dinner recharge and we'll pick up this tomorrow so not bad for a day's work It's day two of the build and things are moving along quite nice. I got the sheetrock up on this whole wall and the small little wall here. A little tough towards the top and the little skinny sections. Things aren't perfect. I haven't sheetrocked all that much in my life. So it's a garage. I'm feeling happy with it. Got some insulation in there, moisture barrier. And now the sheetrock's in place. I even got the uh, plug-ins. This one I went a little bit prematurely and it was sunk in too far, I didn't measure. So then I measured this one, this one's plumb, doing really well. This one I went in there and I unscrewed the socket actually. And um, when you take your plug in, there's a couple of uh, pieces of metal you can bend in 
and that let it stick out a lot further, still grab tight so I can plug in things. And it's just a little bit of indent in here, but my wife didn't even recognize it until I pointed it out. So, and it'll be covered up by the cold frame. So, pretty happy. So there we go. So now it's time for some measurements. Now we have to measure and we have to see what we're going to do here. So the power box is right here. We got a stud here, stud here, stud here, here and here. So we're going to go from stud to stud, which is about 60 uh, some inches, right? 60 couple, 63. Um, outside edge to outside edge, probably 65 or 66. So it's going to be about six feet long and we're going to come out from the uh, garage to about 26. So we'll have a good two feet of inside space after insulation and all. And that'll provide enough room for the car. Uh, when uh, my stepchildren are old enough to have a car in five years, we'll be able to pull it back in here. So 26, 27, 28 I could squeeze by, but that's, that's taking your mirrors and pushing your mirrors in before you go in the garage every time. It's kind of a pain, right? So we're going to uh, uh, err on the side of a caution, and we're going to go about 26, which again gives me a good 24 inches, uh, 23, 24 inches inside. Um, so we're going to do some measurement. We're going to get a couple of boards, start putting some shelf structure in here, and we got the startings of a really nice cold frame that'll be a semi-permanent structure. So I'm taking a peek at a couple of the various trees that I know I'll keep inside, and that's going to be the uh, Japanese maples are my tallest trees. I've got a Satsuki azalea that's not nearly as tall, so I don't have to measure that one. Um, won't be there for many, many years. So just making some choices to make sure that I have enough space for some trees. And hopefully I'll maybe even be able to make some movable shelves to increase in size over the years or manipulate that uh, cold frame as needed throughout the years. Now this one is my biggest tree by far. It will go down in size once we get the air layer done and we chop it down a little bit and we get a better pot. Right now, I'd have to have a shelf hunkering around 50 inches tall on one side for this big tree. Um, this one, I believe, has been grafted with the Minnesota variety. This might be okay outside, but I'm not gonna risk it. So it will go into the cabin cold frame or possibly the new one on a new shelf. It's day three of the new cold frame construction. And I got the basic design done. The skeleton is done. So I'm gonna have a main shelf right here. So I left this section open. I got two by sixes on the back support in the front. This is gonna help support two doors that'll open up this way. So I have extra wood here. Uh, so the doors will have plenty of room to you know close the gap of air coming through um, and also extra wide in here just for extra support and um, be able to attach a lot of things back here inside uh, the uh, cold frame if need be we'll put a top on that's hard so i can put storage up here so this will be nice shelving space for extra either bonsai stuff or other garage type stuff and then i'm going to have have the insulation Kind of nestled right in there. In between the 2x4 layer and the hard surface up on top. That way I'll get that insulation and I'll have a hard top to uh, be able to store my stuff. So I got the initial insulation here from repurposing my old cold frame. Let's take a look at that. So there's the old cold frame. All the insulation has been taken out of the uh, old shelving system that was the cold frame had all the plants in there extra air holes in there for the heat to maneuver around a little tall space there on the left but everything's been taken off so this is all just loose now nothing left on there because we're going to get it all on there all this repurposed pink foam styrofoam insulation now i'm also going to repurpose all this so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to deconstruct the old cold frame and all the extra wood is going to be used to create that top shelf on top and then also probably a shelf on the bottom for a nice firm bottom. So we're going to repurpose the cold frame into the new cold frame. That way it's uh, costing less, better for the environment, less waste, 
all those good things. So it is time to take a hammer and a screwdriver, uh, whatever it takes, to salvage and to reuse the old cold frame pieces parts. The demolition of the old cold frame is going good. Slow but sure progress, but better be safe than sorry. So I had all these trim pieces that were to go around the top, the middle, and the bottom for decoration when this thing was a toy cabinet for the kids. I put this trim. So I was wondering how I was gonna set the uh, foam inside here. Well, if I take my trim that was this way and I turn it upside down and I put it right there on my two by fours, the, tri the uh, foam is gonna sit right on there. I'll put that all the way around, all the way around the frame and I'll have this perfect little one inch lip for the styrofoam to sit on. you repurposing the wood. I won't have to buy any extra wood for that purpose. A um, couple of nails uh, or small screws and we're set to go. So demolition going good. Now the trim's all off, the backboard is off. That's kind of nice too. I got this kind of nice um, almost beadboard looking backdrop for this uh, shelf when I made it for the kids. And it's got that smooth uh, uh, veneer kind of uh, surface on it so uh, it was nice for the cold frame because less mold and mildew and things would cling onto the wood right it's not just porous uh, uh, open wood um, so that could be used also in the cold frame as some more uh, possible back backdrops uh, maybe holding in some of the uh, insulation between the wall and the actual cold frame so I'll be able to repurpose some of that as well don't have nearly enough to cover the whole thing but uh, some is better than none and I can reuse almost all of the wood as far as this I discovered that I put a nice piece of plywood that I stained over another piece. And I'm not sure why I did that. But this is doubly thick. And it's all um, either uh, glued or nailed together. Don't know that I'll get that apart. But I'll be able to cut these into a couple of sections to use as top supports up there. And the bottom is uh, kind of falling apart a little bit more. But I got the sides the shelving, the top, I should have enough wood to for sure secure the top of the cold frame and maybe a couple other miscellaneous pieces. So now it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be up to I think the uh, blunt force of a hammer or a big crowbar. I don't think I have a big crowbar, but I do have an ax. So let's go ahead and do that. So this will be one of those loud things that I just have to go ahead and give it a go. success on that side. We have a pile of scrap wood here from the old cold frame. So I got all the nails out, all the screws out, broken off, bent out, thrown away. And now we just have to clean up all the edges of this wood and then measure what we have left and see if we can get some up on top of that cold frame. So we have to cut some of the, the icky edges off next. I am making a colossal mess in this part of the garage, but uh, all the work to get this thing finished up. So I've cut the extra boards. I'll bring you in closer here, look at those. And I got the first bit of purple up there. So let's take a peek. So up top, I took the extra pieces of the board from the old cold frame and I cut them up and trimmed them up and got them from side to side. And then I was able to take the trim board from the old cold frame that used to be a toy box and I used that to hold this piece in right here. And I cut these two sides to fit perfectly within those two squares. The only hole I have right now is right there. So we'll put some purple in there, hold that in there, maybe with some glue once the top is secure. And we have ourselves a roof that has insulation and a sturdy top up there. That sturdy top is gonna be able to have me have bins behind the garage door up there and a little nook and cranny. Now, of course, the stuff that's pushed way up there, it's gonna never be, you know, ever seen again. So it's one of those things when you have more stuff. Uh, if it's gonna be something I need, I wanna have easy access to it, which that won't be easy access. So it'll be those things that we just don't use that often. We'll find some stuff to go there, guaranteed. So it's coming along and so is the mess. Day two is coming to a close here. 
we've made some fantastic progress. So I went out and got some more of the styrofoam stuff. And I have the sheet on the left side there with little skinny ones in between the two by four and the gap that I had. And there's a little skinny one in there as well. So that covers the gaps. And then I'll show you how I connected those. We got the screw with the big washer into that support right there. And one up there as well. Right there, going into there. So support, support, and support. I might put one in the middle with a longer screw to make sure that this stays tight as well or tape it shut. One of the exciting things I wanted to uh, use the top of my old cold frame. Here's the old top. I put in a little little rail there on both the, the back and the front. And now I have the shelf that can move anywhere I want it. There is an, enough for me to do two. So I can do one big one, or I could separate this and shove it all the way down on the other side. Go on that side. I got a couple more two by twos at the store today to do something similar and a little bit higher level. So I've got some movable shelves. We'll get something at the bottom there to cover up the uh, styrofoam there and uh, secure those top pot boards, which I haven't done yet. But there you have it. Day two is coming to a close. We're going to rest. We're going to think about it some more. Start thinking about where the electricity will come in, where the fans will be placed, where the heater is going to go, and some more shelving. A fine day's work. Getting a little bit of work done on day three. I've been able to solidify most of the purple stuff on the bottom, the sides, the top, all the way through. I did secure the top this morning. And then I've got some of this kind of wainscoting material. This right here is kind of whiteboard on one side and chalkboard on the other. I found it at the big box store. Uh, it was only $5 per two by four chunk. So really inexpensive, really nice. So this provides kind of a smooth surface so water doesn't build up like on the wood. All this wood pour stuff will probably spray paint at some point. I've got my movable shelves. I've even got some portable uh, uh, thicker deck boarding that fits in the slats. We can put uh, trees all the way across. I've got this top one. That right now can slide on the top. I can open this up if I need it. Slide this back over here. And then down here, I got this shelf right here. I haven't secured it or anything, but I can extend one also out to here. So if I were to put this down here, I could have more shelving here, but I'd have to secure that so it's not wobbly. Or I'll cut a piece to fit that shelf just to make it the right size all the way through. And then I've got these amazing fans that I uh, ordered last year for the plant room. And uh, these Axial Series Roof Fan Kits. So A-X-I-A-L oh Axial Series. These are the quietest fans. They're unbelievable. And they're made with really high-end uh, materials. So they're really strong. And you can clip them on in. There's a hole for a nail to go through, and I literally can attach that right to the 2x4 in this section. And then I have one down here that I can attach down here in this section, and I've got an outlet right there for both of those. Or I'll put one over on this side so I have air going this way and down here air going this way. Then I'll have some circulation of air. I'm going to plug one of these things in and bring the camera close, and I'm going to show you how nice and quiet these things are. So here's the fan. It's amazingly quiet. Let me stop talking and listen to the fan. It's probably picking up a little bit more now on the speaker. Let's turn it back this way. The neighbor's sprinkler is on too, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be picking that up. I'll see in post-production. But this fan is just enough speed, it's not too much, it's not gonna blow the trees over, but it's not too soft where it's not gonna provide really great flow. So it's an amazing fan, about $16 online. So I picked up two on Prime Day. I think it was part of the Prime Special, maybe, maybe not, but 16 bucks per fan. I got one for the top, one for the bottom section, or middle section, and I think the, the uh, cold frame will be in really good shape. So before I get too crazy into finishing this thing up and closing it off, 
I also have to figure out where the heat's gonna go, probably down below, heat'll move on up. And that's another reason why I like the slats inside my shelves here, where I've got these movable shelf systems, because I can have airflow and the air will rise. So that's kind of nice. But then I have to consider lighting this time around because more and more people are starting to put lights in their cold frame. My cabin cold frame gets light because there's two windows and a little bit of slit of a window in the door. So it's getting light all winter long, just like the trees that are dormant in Minnesota. They're getting light all year long as well. So a little light might not hurt. So I have a lot of these uh, Parkan reflectors down in my plant room. And so I can, you know, put a piece of board across my two two by fours here and clamp this guy right here and give some light over there. I can put one on that side and put some light over here. And of course, I can do that down in the bottom, middle layer, and I can even do it at the bottom as well. Even if I have a gap in here and I had a light right down here, the light would penetrate down below there as well. So I have these guys to consider, and I've got full spectrum LED light bulbs in there. And then I have my Unifun lights that are the full spectrum. I've got the reds, the purples, you know, and the whites. And uh, this is my first one, incidentally, that went kaput. Um, it just stopped working. Uh, half the colors were going bad, and then it just all of a sudden didn't work. I haven't plugged it in since, so who knows. But just for uh, the possibility here, I can put this thing right here, and these do not give off a lot of heat. So I can stretch some wire from all four sides and, pl and put it in right here and that'll provide a nice uh, general lighting for uh, the plants on this section. And then of course I can always put one here and then over underneath here I could hang one between the, not, not the shelves that move, but the part that holds the shelf up. I could secure another one here and I could secure another one down in here. So I could get four of these guys, one, two, three, four, and then uh, the bottom plants would get some residual light, but I might have to get a couple more and or I could put a couple of these. In the beginning, I'd probably just put on lights on a timer for about eight hours a day um, and then slowly go up till about 14 hours by the time we get it out in the springtime. So some decisions to be made. I can put these lights in any time. I just have to figure out where the clamps will go. So I'll need a piece of wood to put this clamp on or, or a bar, um, kind of a broom handle or something like that. And we'll be able to have light and cool air circulating through the cold frame. I think the most difficult decision that's left for me to make is what to do about the door and how it's going to hinge on and be real easy access. Because if there's one thing that I've learned from a lot of the MBS members and people who have cold frames that if you have easy access, it's just so much easier to take care of your plants. If you have a low cold frame that you have to lift up the top and you have all kinds of stuff on top that you can't lift up, not going to work. Mine opened up like this. Uh, but they weren't lifting from the hinges in the back of the cold frame. They were hinged right here so I could open them up. These I'm going to probably open up this way. I have two seven footers left that are probably two and a half feet wide. Oh, not even two feet. So this whole thing left to right is about six feet. So if I get one more panel that's four by eight, four plus one of these is just not quite big enough to secure this uh, as, as a door. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to tape these two together and then have the solid one here. I'll cut this to fit. And these will close together this way. My other option is I thought about making a door this way with the new piece that I get and I can swing it up like that. So a couple of decisions to make. I will need one more piece of the purple stuff here, the pink purpley stuff, in order to make these doors. So again, we have easy access. We can get into our plants and water them from uh, the main entrance here. So it's gonna be really, really cool. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna work that. And my biggest challenge is how I'll hinge them on. I could make a wood door frame and connect the wood door frame right to these parts right here. And then it just has to be able to swing open. So I might be able to do that. Or a lot of people just take tape. And if I line this up, put tape on here. And then when you open it this way, the tape just gives, it's flexible, and you should be all right. I could experiment with that first, and if it's just not working real well, I can get myself some uh, thin pieces of uh, one by threes and make a door frame, and then just uh, secure these onto the door frame. A little more thinking to do before I go out and make my next purchase, but it's coming along nicely.
It's July the 7th, uh, day four of the cold frame build. I uh, went away up to the cabin for the 4th of July weekend, took a little break from the build, and ready to jump back in. So I put this temporary door up here just to kind of see if I could uh, put these together with a little tape, have my door open up and close, and that'll work, but I have to put these two side by side. And I'll do that with some wood because I will make a custom frame with hinges like I did over here. So today I've completed door number one. So I got a real nice chunky piece of two by four here so I can lift up a little bit because my floor must not be completely plumb or my door is not completely plumb. I already have it on the hinges on kind of thin wood. So if I reposition now, it'll just kind of weaken the structure. So. Uh, it's nice to have a door anyway, solid door. I can close these two, put a little latch between the two of them, and they'll stay on real nice and tight. It comes halfway to the 2x6. Just a little little lift on the 2x4 and a little kick in there. It's in there nice and tight. So I actually like the tight fit. So we can open this up here. And so all I did is take took 1x4s and made myself a frame. I got the hinges on my 2x4s that uh, separate the build. And then I just kind of put some brackets up here to hold it together. And then I did some liquid nail to uh, attach the uh, styrofoam insulation. So with the door closed, I have some tape up on the top. I have tape on the side. And I also have tape just on the door right here. It goes all the way down to the, to the bottom up from the top. But then a second piece of tape that goes from the the styrofoam on the outside, the styrofoam on the door. So I slip that in there so when the door opens, the tape just kind of flexes open and kind of goes uh, against each other. Then when it's closed, it fits nice and tight. So this crack right here would have produced a little bit of airflow, which wouldn't be horrible if it lost a lot of uh, air, though heat in the cold, cold depths of the winter here in January, February, even though it's in my garage. Um, I didn't want to lose that. I want to control the heat as best I can with the fans inside in the heater. So I got the tape here, some really good gaff tape. Duct tape can work as well, of course. The gaff tape is super expensive compared to your roll of duct tape. Duct tape will do the same thing. This black gaff tape I just love. I use it on a lot of my construction stuff. So opens up to about there, then kind of stops right there with the hinges. Plenty of uh, space for me to get into my cold frame and close it up there. Door number two is complete. So I got the two cracks, or I got the crack of the two panels all taped up on the inside and the outside. We've got it hinged up and taped up to support here. Right now, this is an enclosed cold frame, top, bottom, sides, and the wall, of course, facing the outside. So I've got a couple kick plates down below. You can't see those. They're like uh, two by fours up here. They're the same at the bottom. So every time I lift this one up and I have to kick it in a little bit, uh, I don't kick this and wreck it. So I got kick plates. Um, so two two by fours with a cross piece, so uh, they hold it together. So this is just loose. So when I go like that and move that door knob, and then I move this protector right there to above that, this one pops open. This becomes a handle. And there I can see inside my cold frame. And again, I got a tall section, two short sections, and this whole big section on top. When we close it up, we always close the left side first. We bring this one in, and here's where the door gets a little stuck still, so I lift up on the handle and kick the kick plate down at the bottom. I can close the handle here for now. Go up here and bring that uh, deck boarding down, and we have a, a pretty solid uh, uh, door now. So in between these sections, there's the two by six, so not as much air will get through here. But what I'll do now is I'll take some of my extra pink stuff and I will make a slab that fits perfectly right here to here because in here, this is air going into the cold frame because of that top shelf. So I'll put a piece that's as wide as the two by fours to keep it kind of symmetrical. And we'll go all the way up to the top board right here. And that'll be glued on to this panel. Again, we open this door first. So when we go to open the door, this panel will come out like that. And then I'll do the same down here just for extra protection of any air leaks uh, because the door is not completely solid to those two by fours, but pretty darn close. So I will cut those pieces next and glue those on. And um, we will be pretty much done with the door on the cold frame. So in the top left, 
of the cold frame. I've got the fan in there. It's on right now. Blowing a little cool air into the top part of the cold frame. Then as you go down to the bottom part of the cold frame, the middle section and bottom section, or this tall section, there's the other fan. And it's doing its thing as well. So I have two outlets, one right there, one right there. I did secure the pink stuff back there because um, that outlet was close to that two, boy, two by four section. So what I'll do is probably plug in an extension cord and then I'm gonna wrap that with plastic and make sure no water gets in there. And then for this one, I think I'm gonna get one of those um, outdoor plug-in protectors. So you just put it right over the top of that and then the extension cord goes in there and there's a cover. It'll come right over the top and cover that to protect that from any moisture, from any wild and crazy watering I do on this level. Anything I water up here, these will be boot trays up here. So the water will stick mostly in the boot trays. But if I spray crazy, it's gonna go on that back wall there and it's gonna drip down. So I gotta make sure I uh, do some protection so I don't get any water into those electrical outlets. So we'll work on those protections, hang some lights next. Right now the fans are within reach of the plug even without an extension cord. But I'll put timers on these. So the timer will go off, uh, the, the air will circulate the fans will be on 15 minutes every hour, every other hour, so probably every other hour during the daytime. Leave them off at night during the daytime. Uh, we'll just go every other hour for about 15, 20 minutes. Keep the air circulating.